What's up, gang? It's Willie Rebuild back with another one. About to teach y'all a little something about the fuel system on your LS swap, LT swap. So, uh, any fuel injection in general on your old school car. So what you got right here, you got your 89 box Chevy tank. Um, on your 89 box Chevy, if you walk over here and take a look at the engine, this is a fuel injected engine on the, that come from the box Chevy is an 89, it's fuel injection. So let's just say you had a, a 1978 box Chevy and you was doing the LS swap. With a setup like that, it'll be easy because all you gotta do is all the fuel injected tank for your box Chevy from let's say the 89 box Chevy, which will be fuel injected and it would have a baffle in the bottom of the tank. So what is the baffle? The baffle is your little bowl that goes, that come in the bottom of the fuel injected tank. Now, let me see what I did with my flashlight so I can show you uh, what your baffle look like. I think I left my flashlight back here by the back of this car. And it is. Oh, let's put that. So I can show y'all what's going on here. So, if you shine the light down here in the tank, you can see that's just the bottom of the tank. There's, there's no baffle in the bottom of that tank. In this tank here, you got a baffle in the bottom. Like I see, the box Chevy was fuel injected. So if you had a 78 box Chevy and you wanted a fuel injection tank, you can just order you a fuel tank for 89 box Chevy or 90. I think they started making a fuel injection 86 or 87 to 90. Um, with your G-bodies, what you would do, if you got a Monte Carlo, you would just order you a tank for a Grand National, which was fuel injected, and it's gonna have your baffle in the bottom. Well, with the don't, there is no don't that came fuel injection, to my knowledge. So, what you gotta do is, you gotta put you a setup in there that's gonna give you a baffle in the bottom of the tank. So, what a lot of guys will do with these dunks, they'll take a 96 Impala tank, a 95 Impala tank, and they'll retrofit that tank into the coat. I'm not doing that because the, they don't want they don't want to pay me to do all that. It takes time to make the straps and shit and make sure it's right, and time is money. Um, another way is you can buy a custom tank and you know they'll have the baffle welded in that tank or however you do it well the way i'm gonna do it is i'm gonna use this aeromotive fuel pump and this what you're looking at right here this is your baffle so i hear a lot of guys say well i just put my tank in i just put my fuel pump in the tank without the baffle the problem with that is um, the problem with that is the car will run, but what'll happen is when the tank get low, say the quarter tank or whatever like that, and the car on the incline, say you going up a bridge or something like that, you will be starving a, a engine for fuel and you won't even know it. Uh, if you one of those guys that like to do donuts and shit, when that little bit of gas in there go to sloshing around, you starving the, the engine for fuel and you don't even know it. Now, will it work? Yeah, it'll work. If you want to keep the tank at a half a tank, I can't guarantee that because what happened with me is the customer will go run that bitch on E 
instead of nailing in it and nailing in it and blow the fucking mold up and then he'll come back to me like it's something I did. So when you're doing it, doing something for yourself, you can take shortcuts. If it fail, the only person you got to be mad with it just is yourself. If you're paying somebody to do it, then that person is going to be responsible for it. So I got to make sure that I cover my ass by putting the baffle in the tank. So what I'm doing now is I'm drilling this tank out so I can install my aeromotive fuel pump. So the way this pump works is, let me get it out. This pump fits down inside the hill. Like I say, that's your baffle. You cut that down to fit the tank. If you look at the pump, you got your return, you got a vent, and you got your outlet. So how am I gonna know how much gas in there will it rebuild? Well, that's what this original factory hole for. When you run the aeromotive pump, you need to still use your sending unit from the factory tank, which that's a factory tank too. This tank right here had a little that hole in the bottom and shit, and then it's rusty. And then that one there, what they just shipped, if you look at it real close in that corner, it got a little damage on it. But we ain't sending it back for that. You ain't gonna be able to see that shit. It's gonna be under the coat. And that's the top that's gonna be facing the bottom of the coat. We ain't, I ain't got three weeks to be waiting on another tank to come in. So I'm gonna use that one. Um, so yeah, you're gonna put your factory sending unit back in. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut these off and cap them up. And um, I'm gonna put that back in there so I can be able to know how much fuel is in the car through my factory sending unit. So that's what I'm doing on the dump. That's how I'm gonna get my baffle tank for my fuel injection. Um, I'm going to have to cut y'all off for a minute because I done burned up this old bullshit ass drill trying to drill this hole out in the tank so I got to go get another drill so I can finish drilling the uh, tank out and then I'll install uh, the rest of my kit and my, uh, cut my baffle down and show y'all how to do that. And, um, we'll go ahead and get the tank and the fuel system set up under the coat. So now you know why you need the baffle in the tank and why it's not good to run your uh, fuel system without a tank with a baffle in it because you can starve the engine for fuel and damage the engine. So I'm gonna go and get me another drill and I'll cut y'all back on in a minute, gang. All right, gang, so I'm back. I done went ahead and drilled my hole out. I put my bracket in from under the bottom. I also cut my baffle down to fit in the tank. If you follow your instructions, they're gonna tell you to cut your baffle a little longer than it need to be. That way it won't be moving around in the tank. When you get ready to install your baffle, you're gonna take this little ring here and uh, put it on top of the bolts. I gotta get it lined back up now so I can show y'all. But you're gonna get it down on your bolts like that and you're gonna kinda fold your baffle up and uh, get it down in there. And once you get that done, you can go ahead and Put your seal on, like so. Put your seal on, and uh, you can go ahead and install your fuel pump. Come with instructions um, to tell you how to do it. I'm just here to give you kind of an idea of what's going on here. As you can see, that's how it's gonna fit in the tank. Um, 
I had to put these in six fittings in here. It didn't come with those. And you're gonna need three of them. Um, so I go ahead and tighten those down. Get the fuel pump tightened down. And uh, I go ahead and set it up under the car and show y'all how I'ma um, I'm install my fuel system on the dunk with this tank, gang. So let me go ahead and just tighten that down and then I'll cut y'all back on in a second once I'm ready to install a fuel tank on the vehicle. Like, share, comment, and subscribe. Showing y'all a different way how to set your fuel tank up when you don't have a baffle inside of the tank, gang. You're learning here first with old Willie Rebuild, baby. That's right, I'm gonna cut y'all back on in a minute. All right, gang, so I'm back. Went ahead and tightened the pump down. And if you got everything right, it should look something like this. These two fittings here, uh, caps, I just put them on there temporary. That's for vacuum caps, uh, vacuum, not fuel. Um, I went ahead and put my wires on here on the fuel pump. A hot in the ground, that's all you have. Like I said, you're going to get your fuel level from here, from the uh, old sending unit. And this wire, I'll put a, uh, I'll put a connector on there, a two-prong connector. So if you ever need to take the gas tank down, which I will have to take it down because I got to put the right caps because I'm getting ready to put it up right now so I can measure my wires out and run my fuel line. But I always put a connector on the, on the uh, gas tank wire so in case you need to take the tank down, you can just unplug the wires instead of having them ran straight to where you have to cut them. So that's what I got going now, gang. Um, I'm getting ready to uh, put this tank up. I don't know if I'm gonna bring y'all under the car with me. It's kind of hot in here, but I will walk y'all back through once I get it up there and show y'all how I set up the fuel system and stuff. Basically the same as the LS. Um, we just using the air motor pump. So I'll cut y'all on in a minute once I get the tank up, gang. All right, gang, we back. So what you wanna do is you wanna run your one fuel line from your fuel rail. This is a returnless style system. You wanna run this one line from the fuel rail all the way to the back of the car, to your uh, Corvette regulator. Uh, let me get up under here so I can show y'all because it's a tight fit up under here from the gas tank to the back to the uh back side of the car but as y'all can see let me see if i can get a better angle let me see gang uh, as y'all can see you got your fuel pump your uh corvette regulator and filter set up just like the ls you got your uh, outlet in your return. I haven't ran my vent yet, but I will. The tank have to come back down. I got the wires just hanging right there for it. This the wires coming from the fuel pump. My positive and my negative, two wires, they both red, but it don't matter. I'll put a little tape, black tape on one to let them know whoever come behind me and work on it, which one is the negative. This year, my hot wire coming from the uh, the harness, and I just, I'll run the ground from the frame, run this around, and make a connection right on top of the tank for the power and ground. And then this wire here, that's my wire for my float, for my sending unit to go inside the car. And like I told y'all in the Dakota vi in the um, Dakota Digital video, this wire is a pink wire. So that's how I know that that pink behind the dash 
was my sending unit while you're on that fuel because usually GM cars, that's how they ran with the pink wire, uh, pink wire in the back for the sending unit. But I'm gonna take that tank back down. I'm gonna take the tank back down and uh, hook all my wiring up and then I put it up for good. And as you can see, this is a LT swap fuel system basically set up the same way. I'm finna bring y'all under the box Chevy and you will see that it's the same setup. I don't have a tank up on this one yet because I don't have the fittings to put on the sending unit right now, but I will have it up in the next day or two. I gotta get the fittings for it. But you can see right there, you got your one line running to your Corvette regulator. And this fuel pump actually, it's the same size fuel pump that I got in the dump. Um, it's a 340 pump because we're gonna upgrade, we're gonna upgrade, uh, we're gonna put a LSA blower on here later down the line. So I put a little bit more pump in the tank to support that. And um, I might even do away with the regulator once we get to that. I might install a reg, uh, fuel pump, uh, a fuel pressure regulator under the hood to account for the LSE because it's going to need bigger injectors and more fuel. So I'll probably get away with the uh, Corvette regulator slash fuel uh, filter because that may starve the, uh, it may starve the engine for fuel. So I'd rather be safe than sorry when running the power adder. But that's how you want to set up your fuel system game. Uh, like I see, same thing. You got your one wire. I mean, your one fuel line coming all the way from the front to the back. I done went ahead and installed the mounts in here. Talked to the engine builder. Engine should be ready in the next couple of days. Might be ready now. I haven't called him. Actually, he told me it was going to be ready Monday. Today, Tuesday. I just haven't called him because I felt like if it was finished, he would have called me. But with the rebuild, I broke down the... Uh, I done broke down the uh, the fuel situation with your sump in the tank and how to set up your LS or LT uh, fuel system when you don't have a sump in the tank. Showed you how to use the air motor fuel pump. Showed you how to, how it install, and basically it works the same way as having a baffle in the tank, gang. It's Willie Rebuild. Don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe, gang. You get the secrets and tricks right here with Willie Rebuild, baby. Subscribe to the channel if you ain't already subscribed. Over and out.